week, we're teaching Arena Zoomers what it's like to not be able to play Magic by hard locking our opponents out of doing pretty much anything in a bunch of different ways. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. And this week, we're teaching Arena Zoomers what it's like to not be able to play Magic. So if you look at the last 30 years of Magic's design... In the old days, back in my day, there were stasises and then snaring bridges and blood moons and wastelands and strip mines, all kinds of things that essentially could just make you not be able to play Magic. But today, this new age of Magic players from Magic Arena, they got no idea what that's like. Wizards, maybe for the last 15 years, has really just stopped printing pretty much anything that can lock people out of playing Magic. That's just not what modern Magic design is like. So players who only really play Magic Arena are relatively new to the game, they have no idea what it's like to actually get hard locked out of playing Magic. So thanks to some new cards from Historic Anthology 6, we got a super locky deck with a bunch of different ways to just hard lock people out of playing the game. And our goal for today is teach some Arena Zoomers what it's like to not be able to play Magic. So our deck is inspired by Chalice of the Void, and Chalice actually in our sideboard because it's really hit or miss in Historic. Some matchups it's just absolutely unplayable, other matchups it's really good. So in the right matchup, a Lurus Dex, is it Phoenix style Dex, we're bringing in four chalices, locking people like that. But there's another, maybe even more impactful lock that came out of Historic Anthology 6, which is Knight of Souls Betrayal. This four mana legendary enchantment that gives all creatures negative one, negative one. And you're probably thinking, okay, you, know, you lock out X ones. That's nice. You know, I guess you got some sort of token deck or something. No, no, no. This is a combo piece. With the help of Overwhelming Splendor, we can just hard lock creatures out of the game forever. We play Knights of Soul Betrayal, so everything gets negative one, negative one, and then Overwhelming Splendor, essentially a humility that only hits our opponent to turn all of their creatures into one ones, and what this means is as long as these pieces stick on the battlefield, our opponent loses our entire board of creatures and can't play more creatures. They'll just die immediately. They'll be one ones again, negative one, negative one. And now I hear you saying, wait a minute, but Overwhelming Splendor, that excludes Planeswalkers. An enchanted player can't activate abilities unless they are mana or loyalty abilities. Well, we got a plan for this as well. We have Immortals on which just locks down Planeswalkers. So if our opponent's trying to win with Planeswalkers and not creatures, we got a plan for that too. Of course, the problem with this is it's really expensive and we need to find specific pieces. So we're backing this up with traditional enchantment Enchantress stuff. Seth is Enchantress presence draws card to find our lock pieces. Sanctum Weaver, Wolf of Haven can make a ton of mana to get to our overwhelming splendors and immortal suns. Destiny Spinner to fight through counter spells. And I guess it's kind of our win con, but really our win con is our opponent rage quitting because they're not able to play magic anymore because we locked them out of the game. I don't think we actually need to kill people with this deck. We just got to make our opponent not want to play magic anymore. That's the main goal. I did like Tutor can fight our combo pieces. And then since we got this enchantment stuff, we got a boring old lock too. Nine lives solemnity essentially locks us out of dying to damage forever. Solemnity keeps nine lives from getting counters. Nine lives, if we take damage, it would get a counter. So essentially, this can lock our opponent out of killing us in some situations as well. So that's the plan. Lock our opponent with Chalice. Lock their creatures with Overwhelming Splendor, Knight of Souls, Betrayal. Lock our opponent's damage with nine lives solemnity. Mana base, pretty typical stuff. Sideboard, we talked about the Chalice. We got some more removal and lock pieces. A Gideon's Intervention keeps our opponent from casting something. Ixalan's Binding, Exile something. Keeps Keeps our opponent from casting more of them. Some sweepers, some graveyard hate, and that is Hardlock Enchantress. That is our deck for today. Gonna teach some new arena players who have probably never played against a lock deck before what it's like to not be able to play Magic. So thanks for watching, everyone. Enjoy the gameplay. I'm sure you'll enjoy it more than our opponents. I don't think they're gonna like it very much. And I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Looking to pick up some sweet, sweet Double Masters 2022 reprints Why prices are cheap? Well, you can snag them all from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. Against the odds time, we are teaching arena players specific oh my god that knight of souls betrayal might be pretty good teaching arena players how uh how not to be able to play magic <laughs> opponent curse bound witch okay hits us layer the hydra so if we sterling grove we activate this we need more black mana that's what we're that's what we're working for is more black mana i think we just yeah let's just wolf Willow haven 
We need double black for this Knight of Souls betrayal. That is the next step here. Abundant tap land. Unlucky witness. Wow, Knight of Souls betrayal is going to be so good. Abundant passes. Well, Woodland Cemetery. Sterling Grove. Destiny Spinner. And next turn, we get to start showing our opponent what it's like to not be able to play magic. Let's see if they can get some sack value before this Knight of Souls betrayal comes down. Abundant Fatal Grudge. What does this say? Okay, makes a sack. Sure, hits us. Well, opponent, the bad news is here. Uh, Knight of Souls Betrayal. Kill your stuff. Opponent gets to see a couple cards. Obnixilis is actually good. Well, okay, they hit two pretty good ones. Obnixilis and and Yogg. Can only play one though. They're probably gonna, I guess, ob. Maybe we can take it down with the Lair of the Hydra. It's additional cost to cast a spell, second online permanent. Each opponent sacks a permanent that uh, they control it shares a type with the sacrifice permanent draw card. It's pretty good. Abiding Grace, okay. So that's a little uh, card. Wow, they're gonna lose both. Wow, they didn't ob, interesting. That doesn't do much. <laughs> death and also more death. About a bat. <laughs> That's how you don't play magic. <laughs> got him, got him, got him. Well, now, rest in peace comes in. I'm almost tempted to Chalice of the Void. We can go down my Dillic Tutor. Go down a Solemnity and a Nine Lives. Oh, that is so tempting. Can we chalice them? They do have a lot of ones, but they have other stuff too. I mean, the other the other plan that would be good is just bring in more, more removal, more borrowed times or whatever. Ixalan's binding. Uh, we go down one Destiny Spinner. We do kind of want the Immortal Sun because we did see the obs. Yeah, let's bring the binding. Yeah, try it like that. Well, Knight of Souls Betrayal. <laughs> Doing some serious work against uh, our opponent's deck. We'll see if they have even more ones, then maybe Chalice is better. Although the Binding Grace kind of gets around it. Well, that's what we're going to keep. We don't really have any protection, but boy, we can make some mana. We can make some mana. Overground Tomb Tapped. Go. Opponent. So we probably Wolf of Haven next turn. Double... Double Sanctum Weaver the... F oh, my God. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Wolf of Haven go. Now we can double Sanctum Weaver, hopefully into Immortal Sun. We basically just need card draw and then lock pieces. We got all the mana in the world. <laughs> Opponent, Doomed Traveler. It says for one, sure. Wow, that's a lot of Sanctum Weaver. Sanctum Weaver. That's all, literally all the Sanctum Weaver. Sanctum Weaver, Sanctum Weaver. All right, so we got all the manas. Immortal Sun would be pretty nice. I am a little nervous about an ob coming down. Opponent, can you kill our stuff? Well, there's an ob. I mean, this is kind of fine, though, because then we just Immortal Sun it until they can kill Immortal Sun, makes a devil. Uh, Yeah, we'll just take it. Opponent passes. Solemnity. Play Sanctum Weaver. Play Sanctum Weaver. Add white. Add white. Play Immortal Sun. Play Solemnity. Pass the turn. All right. So no obs for the moment until our opponent can kill this Immortal Sun. If they can kill the Immortal Sun, then things get sketchy. And then we're, I mean, if Immortal Sun sticks, we're like a Knight of Souls Betrayal away from locking our opponent. Fatal Grudge. All right. Well, there goes the Sanctum Weaver. Thankfully, we have many Sanctum Weavers. The opponent can Deadly Dispute to draw cards. Could still use more card draw. All right. There's a Deadly Dispute. Sacks, pings, draws, treasures. Well, come on, deck. Wow. Got him. <laughs> Well, I think that Arena Zoomer learned uh, what it's like to not be able to play Magic. <laughs> that wasn't even the full lock. We didn't even need the full lock, but uh, we'll take it. Sweet, sweet. Against the odds time, we are teaching Arena players, a new generation of Magic players, what it's like to uh, not be able to play Magic. Oh, all right. Well, I mean, we got the boring lock, but we do have a lock. Nine lives, Solemnity. Pretty good against most decks. And we even have double Sterling Grove to protect it. Yeah, this one might just, I mean, they could have like a Farewell or a Thought Seize or something, but this one might be over. Dusk Legion, Zelot, sure. Temple Garden untapped, Sterling Grove, go. 
Zorin. All right. How bad is it? Vampire is just an Edgar. Sure. Well, play Besaju. Play Wolf Willowhaven. Play Sanctum Weaver. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're not quite to overwhelming splendor, but we're not that far away. We can just nine life solemnity though, which is pretty good. Found it, gonna take up. Gorgo Vampire. We will take it. But there's bad news a coming, opponent. There's bad news a coming. Oh, there's Knight of Souls Betrayal too. Let's see. One, two, three, four. All right, Sterling Grove. I mean, this probably does it. Nine lives. Solemnity. Go. And then next turn we can Knight of Souls Betrayal Overwhelming Splendor for the, the hardest of locks. Are we done? Are we done, Arena Zoomer? Have you learned what it's like? Opponents reading our prison pieces. <laughs> Plays a land. Not giving up yet. Not giving up yet. Yep. We will take the big zero. Scoops it up. Okay. Opponents playing vampires. What do we want against vampires? Chalice, no. The Wraths could be okay. Um, do we want a Mortal Sun? It does shut down Soren, but Soren needs creatures to do anything. So if we lock creatures, Soren doesn't really matter. I don't think we need to explicitly lock Soren, but we will bring in two Wraths. Go down Idyllic Tutor. Go down one Destiny Spinner. Probably just a cheap removal. Man, Gideon's Intervention. Yeah, I mean, Gideon's Intervention naming Soren could be sweet. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Too easy, perhaps. Arena players, come on now. Arena players just have no idea how to how to function against a lock deck. I mean, you can't blame new players for not knowing that. It's been generations since Wizards actually put cards at legit lock pieces into formats. Yeah, we'll keep this. We got the Day of Judgment. We are going to need to hit mana. Not hitting mana would be an issue, but as long as we hit mana, this hand's pretty fine. Sweep the board, lock them, draw some cards. About it. Tap land. All right, we hit a land. That's good. We will also play a tap land. A bonus on depths. And Swamp and Dusk Legion. Gelat. Mmm, tap land. Black man is not bad. That's getting us towards this Knight of Souls betrayal. Opponent. Castle Lock Lane. And you know what would be bad is Soren into Lord Xander. I don't think this build probably plays Lord Xander, but if it did, that would be a problem. Knight of the Eben Legion. Well, uh, play the land. Enchantress is present. So we need to dodge. We need to dodge a discard spell for one turn and we get to reset. Forge of Vampire. Ooh, all right. Oh, they took, oh my God. Do we get him with the, the Japanese version? Did our opponent not read this card? Okay, uh, Wrath you. <laughs> they took the Solemnity that was doing nothing and left the Wrath. All right, well, that one's on you, Arena Player. That's not our fault. <laughs> you did that one to yourself. About it, Soren, what do you got to put it? Wow, just ticks up. Well, Enchantress's presence draw a card. Land and Sterling Grove draw two cards. I cannot believe they didn't take that Wrath. That is something. All right, opponent. Well, uh, good luck, I guess. Are we done? Are we done? I think we're done. That's one arena player who learned a little bit about <laughs> getting locked out of the game. <laughs> Let's keep doing that. Against Thod's time, we are teaching uh, arena zoomers uh, in historic what it's like to not be able to play magic. <laughs> doing some, uh, doing some prison, prisoning, staxing, chalicing, locking, etc. Uh, bound at fabled passage. Well, uh, I think we got to get down the Sterling Grove. Sterling Grove. We would like to draw land. A land Wolf Haven Sanctum Weaver would be the best, but. Uh, either way, Sanctum Weaver can get our mana going. Opponent, Swamp, and Goyf, all right. Go, go, one, two, we do get the land, all right. So land untapped, Wolf Willow Haven. And you know what? We're just gonna, we're gonna play another Sterling Grove. I think this is best. They could have like Assassin's Trophy or something. And then next turn, oh, this is gonna be sweet. Next turn, we can double Sanctum Weaver. And then we should be able to just get a... Yeah, opponent hits us. Sanctum Weaver. And also Sanctum Weaver. And a land. They need a Thought Seize here. Do we have enough mana to do everything? All right, Connoisseur. Gonna take our Knight of Souls Betrayal. 
That's okay. Pona gets in, hits us. We got good things about to happen. Pona hits us down to 12. We untap. One, two, so four, five, 10, 11, 12. Idyllic tutor. Uh, overwhelming splendor. Enchantress's presence. Overwhelming splendor, you. Draw a card. Tap land, go. All right, well, now we'll see. We're taking three. Uh, I think we can wait a turn. I don't really want to lose the Sterling Grove lock. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Yeah. Two clues in a blood. You know what? You know what? I think we actually do this. This means, in theory, two removal spells could get us, but get the Knight of Souls Betrayal. Hopefully, this just does it. And opponent! <laughs> All the glyphs in the world, not good enough. All right, opponent's playing Jund. What do we want against Jund? I mean, rest in peace does wreck Tarmogoyf. Probably just a bit more removal. Let's go down. One Solemnity, one Nine Lives, one Destiny Spinner, go up, Borrow Time, Gideon's Intervention, Ixalan's Binding, run it like that. Well, I mean, that went pretty well the creature lock is actually just like game over against so many decks well it sounds great we will keep i mean could get wrecked by discard but a it sure takes the sterling grove all right well tap lane go that's big for our opponent that means the removal might actually do something this game all right more thoughtsies Takes Overwhelming Splendor. Well, double thought sees is probably the best start our opponent could get off to i would say uh Sethus, go you also have Fatal Push. All right, so opponents just had the perfect opening hand for uh, the matchup into the Fable the Mirror Breaker. All right, so good on you, opponent. Uh, we'll play Sethus. We will play a tap land. Uh, let's see, I mean this, they could jump us out here. It is possible with the Double Thought Seas opener that they could jump us out. Double Thought Seas, wow, discards two lands. This Fable the Mirror Breaker is going to save our opponent. Riveteer's Charm to get rid of the Sethus. Yeah. Well, we will play Sethus. Play an untap land. Play Sanctum Weaver, draw a card. Hopefully our opponent's about done with. <laughs> about done with this disruption. We'll see. Opponent gets in, makes a treasure. Mm -hmm. No blocks, down to 15. And Inquisition to take the borrowed time. You have another removal spell? Jeez, um. All right, opponent has another, e good lord. Good lord, what a hand for our opponent. Well, we will Ixalan's Binding. Get rid of the Reflections, but I think our opponent, I mean, unless we hit card draw, it's possible our opponent's just done enough already. Three discard spells, three removal spells, and a Fable the Mirror Breaker. That might be enough for our opponent to actually uh, do something this game. Oh, what a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, okay, so that was the best possible Jundra I think our opponent could have. Three lands, three removal spells, three discard spells, and a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That is impressive running. Well, we're on the play for game number uh, game number three. Well, I mean, I guess that's fair. We gotta let the, the Arena Zoomers get a win once in a while. We don't want them all to quit. We still need people to record our videos against. Only most of them. We get to play first. So Limnity, nine lives, and nothingness. Not a very good hand. Although it is pretty thought seize proof and it does have lots of mana. I think we got a mulligan though. All right, well, we'll try this. Uh, we will put Overwhelming Splendor to the bottom and let's see how many discard spells they have today. Swamp, thought seize. All right, it appears the answer is many. Take Sterling Grove. Well, we'll play Sun Petal Grove, pass the turn. Do you have another discard spell opponent? Plays a mountain passes. Well, Swamp and Enchantress's presence. Bone Crusher. Well, we'd like to draw some enchantments. That would be good. Opponent. Stopping rounds on tap. Bone Crusher Giant. Enchantment, please. Sethus. All right, well, play Sethus. Draw a card. Woodland Cemetery Destiny Spinner. Draw two cards. That is our finisher, though. All right, this is good though. We actually got some things on the battlefield this game before they all got killed and thought seized. About it. Bone crushes Sethus. We found a Sterling Grove too. More removal. Gets and hits us. No blocks. Down to 15. 
Tarmogoyf. Opponent's hitting us for seven. That is kind of a lot. Well, one, two. Wolf Willow Haven, the Swamp draw card. Temple Garden, Gideon's Intervention, Bone Crusher Giant. Pass the turn. Oh my goodness. Stop, Arena. Stop. Wow. Cycles. I guess that does grow the goyf. And opponent plays a land and gets in for four. No blocks. Down to nine. Opponent passes. Ooh, Enchantress is present. So good. We gotta not die, though. We do have to not die. That is an important part of this. Well, okay. Enchantress is present. Draw a card. Sun Petal Grove. Wolf Willow Haven. Draw a card. Draw two cards. Sterling Grove. Draw two cards. Here we go, opponent. <laughs> That's what we got. Assassin's Trophy is the Sterling Grove. Do we want a tutor or do we want a land? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think we sack it. Not sure what we're tutoring for. It might just be the Knight of Souls Betrayal. Or actually, maybe just, yeah, let's get another Sterling Grove. Another Sterling Grove to try again next turn. I mean, hopefully we don't die this turn. That would be awkward. Opponent goes attacking. I think we chump. The downside of chumping is this leaves us without a real win con. Okay, there goes our overwhelming splendor. City's Talk Arcana Sewer. This card's actually pretty good as far as the... The digital only cards go. Opponent discards draws. Well, we need a good turn. Sethis. Draw two cards. Sterling Grove. Draw three cards. Borrow time. Get rid of the goif. Draw some cards. Yeah, let's just play a triome. Pass the turn. One, two, three. All right, I mean, I think we're hopefully good. We got the idyllic tutor. We just haven't made a ton of mana this game, opponent. Thought seizes us, sure. I mean, we're drawing so many cards, this doesn't really matter. They might have to take a mortal sun to, to be able to use their planes. Wow, okay. Takes Night of Souls Betrayal, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, sure. We don't have enough mana to gets and hits us. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Well, we untap. Oh, well, that's good. Overwhelming Splendor, you. <laughs> I was going to say we don't have enough mana to tutor up the Overwhelming Splendor and cast it this turn, but we do have enough mana to just draw it. Uh, land Sanctum Weaver. So now the only challenge is getting milled out. We have to avoid getting milled out. New attacks. Discard, discard, discard. Oh, 23 cards in the deck. So we gotta make sure we have a way of, of winning here. We're gonna be able to lock creatures. Wow, doesn't discard anything. What's in our opponent's hand? There must be a way to answer the overwhelming splendor. Otherwise, what's our opponent even doing? But they gotta kill the Sterling Girl first. Hopefully we're good. We need, we do need the concession at some point. If our opponent doesn't concede, milling out is a realistic concern here. And opponent! <laughs> Locked them! They got us a game two with all those thought seizes, but this deck is just like, we're kind of just crushing everyone and teaching a lot of good life lessons along the way. <laughs> oh, poor historic players. <laughs> well, sweet, sweet. Uh, Gets the odds time. We are teaching arena players what it's like to not be able to play magic. And uh, this hand's fine. I mean, good, good curve. We need another black source for Knight of Souls Betrayal, but ooh, I like Wolf Will Haven. That's good. Control A. Well, we'll see how this goes. Could be bad. Island passes. Well, Tomba Garden untapped. Wolf Willow Haven. If they want to counter this, that's kind of fine. The big payoffs are the card draw, the enchantresses. You know what would be bad would be a Narset. Oh, Moon Circuit Hacker. Okay, this is not at all what I expected. Bad news, opponent. <laughs> bad news, friend. 
<laughs> How about a Knight of Souls betrayal? Are we done? Are we done already? Does all <laughs> is all it takes a single Knight of Souls betrayal? Vote it. Okay, Tasha. Okay, Tasha can resolve that. That's a thing. Um, Takes up. Well, we will play the land. Play Enchantress's presence. Play Sethis. And pass the turn. So what does Tasha do? Uh, put those cards on the battlefield. Okay, Ornithopter. That resolves. Takes up Tasha. So I guess this could let our opponent ninjutsu at some point. This will mill us a lot, won't it? Potentially. No, there's Sethus. How do we do this? Let's Destiny Spinner. Draw a couple cards. And then we can just borrow time the Tasha, I guess, uncounterably. Uh, Beseju, borrowed time. Draw a couple cards. Oh, there's overwhelming splendor. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're like two turns away from from the hard lock. About, I mean, they can like kill Destiny Spinner and then counter borrow time, but all right, get rid of Tasha. No, no alchemy cards allowed, opponent. There's rules. There's rules to this historic format. Oh, sure, ninjutsu away. So what's the best thing they ninjutsu? I don't even know. Something that draws a card, I guess, but opponent's in. They're in a bad, they're in a bad, bad way. I mean, if they get back Tasha, sure. At least it's far away from ultimating. The main thing with ultimating is we just don't play that many creatures and we've drawn a lot of them. So our opponent's probably gonna mill like half of our deck and then end up with a bunch of ramp, mostly Sanctum Weavers that we haven't drawn. All right, Ottawa bounces borrow time. That's fine. Gets back Tasha. I mean, once Overwhelming Splendor comes down, especially if you can find a way to protect it, it should just be GG. They need an I win the game ninja. <laughs> if you ninjutsu this and hit your opponent, you win the game. That would give our opponent hope. I mean, we could try to make some lands into creatures and attack, but I think we'd rather just lock our opponent here. One, two, uh, Wolf Willow Haven. Draw a card, draw two cards. Ooh, there's Sanctum Weaver. Oh, and there's a Mortal Sun. Uh-huh, uh-huh, that resolves. We wouldn't mind Shroud. That would be helpful. If the Sanctum Weaver lives, we have all the mana we need. Sanctum Weaver, draw a couple cards. I think we've taken away our opponent's will to play Magic. They're they're downloading Hearthstone as we as we speak. And we haven't even got the full lockout. Okay. Yep, found it. Done diddly done. Uh so ninjas a eh? chalice on zero to stop ornithopter is kind of funny. I don't think it's good, but it's kind of funny. Probably just like a couple seal aways is fine. Go down idyllic tutor, go down a solemnity. Hey, let's go on Gideon's Intervention for nine lives. Run it like that. Maybe this deck's just busted. We're just like stomping people. Opponents on the play. Can we lock them? Ugh, one land. We're gonna, we're gonna mulligan. Ooh. All right, one land we're gonna keep. We're on the draw. We're on the draw. We should find our pieces. We'll put nine lives to the bottom. Well, all right, let's see if we draw lands. If we don't draw lands, we're in trouble. If we do draw lands, this hand's pretty good. There's the Ornithopter, getting the Ninjutsu set up. Retrofitter Foundry, sure. Well, we draw land, so that's good. Tab land, go. All right, opponent, Ninjutsu away. Retrofitter Foundry, make a Servo for two. Sack a Servo, make a Thopter for one. Sack a Thopter, make a four, four. So I guess it's a combo with Ornithopter. It's a Thopter, so you can just sack it and make a four, four. It's kind of a fast start. Opponent hits us, draws a card. Yeah, opponent might be getting there because of this. Oh, they didn't use the foundry. All right, play a land. Wolf Willow Haven. Yeah, I think we might be in trouble this time. Opponent's off to a quick start. Draw an extra cards each turn. So they should be able to just snowball this and do into a win. Oh, I can upgrade now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, combo. That's it. I'm, I'm chalice on zero. That's why we need the chalice on zero. Can't have this. Thought sees. Hmm, is there any way we can get out of this? Seems unlikely. They probably take borrow time, right? Borrow time gives us some shot. Take Cephas. All right. Goes to combat, gets in, draws a card, down to 12. I mean, they probably just have a counter anyway. They've drawn multiple extra cards. Wolf Willow Haven. Well, uh, borrow time. Opponent. All right, let's it go. We'll get rid of the ninja. Opponent makes a servo, gets and hits us. Yeah, gonna be too slow. We gotta, got a ninja. 
All right. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, you got us. You got us, opponent. You, you did it. You did it, Arena. You found a way. Well, we know what our opponent's doing. I guess we can bring in another borrowed time. Maybe Gideon's interventions to Mimi. All right, run it like, run it like that. So we're on the play for game number three. I mean, basically, if you ever play against ninjas, you gotta stop them from snowballing the ninjas. That's essentially, that's essentially it. If they can snowball the ninjas, they're gonna win. Ugh, we're gonna keep this. This hand does not stop our opponent from snowballing ninjas, but it does have a lot of protection and an enchantress's presence. Untap land ornithopter. Can take Enchantress's presence. Yup. Play the land untapped. Pass the turn. We're gonna we're gonna deal with this ninja. Untap land for our opponent goes to combat. Uh, attacks. Ninjutsus. Uh we will seal away. No card draw for you. <sighs> Alright, so we dodge the first one. We are still gonna need a payoff of some kind. Opponent, Ornithopter returns. Changeling Outcast. Now, well, Untap Land, Wolf Willow Haven, Sterling Grove, go. Well, let's see if they have even more ninjas. Infiltrator's the worst, because then they draw two, and then we're in serious trouble. Shipwreck Marsh. They do not have it. Okay. We take one, that's fine. Murderous Rida. Well,. Play the Triome, play Enchantress's Presence, pass the turn, see what our opponent does. No ninjas, no ninjas, no ninjas, please. So we can Sterling Grove to tutor up something. Island for our opponent. Ooh, they top decked a ninja. Looks like Moon Circuit Hacker, okay. Now I think what we do is, oh, they could have a counter, but I think this is worth it. So the opponent gets to draw a card, replay the Ornithopter. All right, we sack the Sterling Grove for Night of Souls Betrayal. We hope it resolves. Uh, Night of Souls Betrayal. Draw it and play it. Draw a card. All right, no counter. That was pretty good, that was pretty good. Tap land go. Well, now we're only taking one at the moment. Opponent on taps. They draw another ninja. Wow, all right, so. Opponents getting the snowball. Draws a card. Well, this has been uh, unfortunate for us running for our opponent to top deck those two ninjas in a row once they were empty handed. Uh, Sterling Grove. Draw a card. Into a useless land. Opponent's going to counter it. Yeah. Actually, let's, let's make a wolf. Only a 1 1, but this can block the card draw at least. No, three in a row? Ho, oh, ho, oh, ho, oh. all right. Well, yeah, that is very unlucky. Plays a land, we draw a Sanctum Weaver, we play Sanctum Weaver, we draw a card. We play Borrowed Time. We draw a Useless Land. We get rid of an Infiltrator. We play Woodland Cemetery, we pass the turn. We need to draw enchantments. We really need Overwhelming Splendor, that's the best. If they drew a third ninja in a row, I swear to God. Fourth in a row, that'd be the fourth in a row. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow, all right. Well, Arena found a way. It required a, some incredibly good running, but they did find a way. Sethus, draw a card. Enchantress's presence, draw two cards. Play the land, borrowed time, draw three cards. Oh, three very bad cards. Get rid of the infiltrator, pass the turn. We did get up to six. I mean, there's still hope. Our opponent has drawn every infiltrator in a row and we still have hope. Block the infiltrator. Drop to five. Are we still gonna get there? Do miracles happen? Retrofitter Foundry can upgrade the Thopter. Well, uh, Sethus, draw two cards.
Enchantress's presence, draw three cards. Are we gonna overcome all those infiltrators and still, and still get there? Add white, seal away, draw four cards. I think we still got there. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we're gonna win this. Oh, and it's a hard lock. Do you have a counter? Drown in the lock can't get Overwhelming Splendor. And Overwhelming Splendor does finish it. Shuts down the Foundry. Yeah, opponent's gonna upgrade. That is acceptable, sure. But there's worse news coming for our opponent. We even get to play the Destiny Spinner first to make sure there's not a counter. And we locked him. Our opponent top decked the best possible cards four turns in a row. And it's not enough. They're still just gonna end up getting locked. Get rid of the Infiltrator. Destiny Spinner. Draw four cards. Make sure our Overwhelming Splendor's uncounterable. And then hard lock you with Overwhelming Splendor. And that should be the game. <laughs> it still came through somehow. Wow. All right. We will play the tap lad. Play the tap lad. Pass the turn. Discard nine cards. And we got the GGs. <laughs> They almost got there. They almost got there, but the overwhelming splendor came through. Wow, I thought they got us that time. I thought Arena was finally going to score a point against this deck, but nope. <laughs> In the end, the power of uh, locking people out of playing Magic is still greater than the top of our opponent's deck. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. Against the odds time, we are teaching Arena players what it's like to get Locked out of being able to, ooh, we finally hit a Chalice matchup. All right, sweet. Well, we're finally gonna get to see if Chalice is good. Once we go to sideboarding. Opponent, land, well, all right, Temple Garden, go. Phyrexian Tower, Soul Guide Lantern, sure. And the Cauldron Familiar. All right, so it's a Cat Oven deck. Well, play the land, play Wolf Willow Haven. So I think our plan next turn is Cephas Sanctum Weaver. See what sticks. Ravenous Squirrel. Opponent gonna get in and hit us. Sure, sure, sure. Knight of Soul's Betrayal seems pretty good against the cat. Are you sacking this to draw and grow the squirrel? Might have to to, yeah. Might have to. His opponent grows a squirrel, sacks, draws a card. They need lands, hits us to 18. All right, plays the tab land. Well, we get a godless shrine untapped. Play Sethus. Play Sanctum Weaver. Ooh, more Sanctum Weavers. All right, your go. Well, let's see if we can kill our stuff. About it, Kaz Logwain. Opponent's got the, the very tapped mana at the moment. Okay, sacks the cat, makes some mana, grows the squirrel. Trail of crumbs, sure, sure, sure. So opponent's gonna draw some cards. Unsure if that is going to matter. Gets back the cat, gets a trigger, gets to draw. The squirrel's getting big. At some point we are gonna have to deal with the squirrel. And then deadly dispute, sacks the cat. All right, I mean, that's a five five. Our opponent has officially grown a five five. Could be a six six. All right, well, we're gonna take it for now. No blocks. Down to 11. Do you have a fatal push? All right, they do. Fatal push off the treasure, grows a squirrel. Yep. Ooh, we can't do this yet, can we? All right, so play. We do have to make sure we don't die. Do we have to play nine lives this turn? That's awkward. I think the answer is maybe. I mean, I guess we could just tutor up something to answer the squirrel. You know what, that might actually be better. Idyllic tutor, borrowed time. The squirrel's just going off. Borrowed time, get rid of the squirrel. Play the Godless Shrine, go. I mean, I feel like we win, we win the long game. So we just gotta make sure we get to the long game. Opponent's gonna get the Luris. Well, okay, Enchantress's presence. Sanctum Weaver, draw a card. Solemnity, draw a card. Go. We're close, we're close, we're close. So opponent can start doing their stuff, sure, whatever. Uh, Solemnity also stops the squirrel from growing now. But next turn we get the Overwhelming Splendor, which I think makes our opponent cry and scoop. Well, we'll see, we'll see. 
<laughs> arena players don't know what it's like they didn't grow up in the stasis era they didn't grow up in the the scepter chant era they didn't grow up in the blood moon era so i think it's we're doing the the magic world a service by teaching our arena opponents what it's like back in my day we had to <laughs> fight through stasis uphill both ways Opponent, our splendor is overwhelming. How do you feel about having nothing? This actually improves our opponent plan. We're actually helping our opponent, I would say. Are we done? Are we done? Are we not playing magic? Okay. Opponent, not done yet. Sacks the plant, sure. Not sure why, but that's fine. Sacks the cauldron for me. Okay, so opponent's trying to do things before before their stuff loses all their abilities. All right, now it loses all their abilities. Uh, now we play Sethis, draw a card. Play field. Oh, we can't play field of ruin. Uh, all right. I guess we just immortal sun. Eh, you know what? Let's nine lives. Let's just lock him in every possible way. Also, nine lives. Draw a card. Oh, there's a knight. It's okay. And opponent. Well, <laughs> got him. All right. Now we get to bring in rest in peace. And I think, I mean, if we're gonna chalice in any matchup, this is the one. So let's bring in the chalice. We'll go down idyllic tutor. We'll go down solemnity nine lives. Go down a destiny spinner. Go down immortal sun. Something must be cut. One sterling grove. You know what? Let's cut the destiny spinner. I don't think we need a win con. <laughs> I mean, I guess we got the one layer of a layer of the Hydra, but I don't think we need a win con. I think we just got to lock them. Like we we don't actually need the ability to win the game. We just need to make it so our opponent decides that they no longer wish to play Magic. That's our. Oh, I think we're keeping. Oh, we're keeping this. Over oh, and dupe. Untapped. Ravenous Squirrel. All right, that worked out. Sun Petal Grove go. That gets us to the rest in peace and also to the Wolf Willow Haven, so that's pretty helpful. Colony Garden, Cauldron Familia. Mm-hmm, opponent hits us for one. I'll play the land, uh, get down the rest in peace. Yo, we would like to keep drawing lands. That would be, that would be ideal. Down to 16, passes. Ooh, we do draw the land. Okay, so play the land. One, two, Wolf Willow Haven, and then Sterling Grove. All right, so Rest in Peace officially protected. All right, gonna sack the plant, grow the squirrel, sure, sure, sure. Outland Liberator. Well, thankfully we got the Sterling Grove, so they're gonna have to kill the Sterling Grove first. And now we play another Sterling Grove, I guess. This does keep growing the cat. I guess there's some world where the cat just jinxes us out, or the squirrel just jinxes us out. Another Cauldron Familiar. And we get smacked. Well, this kind of works though, because now we get to second Sterling Grove. Sanctum Weaver, and now this Outland Liberator doesn't really do anything. With two Sterling Groves, we have the we have the hard lock, and now we're getting to where we want to be. We're not all the way there yet, and we do gotta not die, but block a cauldron familiar. The nine lives helps. Alright, we drop to seven. Opponent passes. So Enchantress's presence. Enchantress's presence. Uh, nine lives. I mean, I think this might just do it. Draw a card. Overgrown Tomb untapped. Wolf Willow Haven draw a card. I mean, we can't die this turn, right? So let's... Chalice on one. Go. Yeah, I don't think we get a place to limit it yet. We should be able to uh, survive with some nine lives counters. All right, opponent, deadly dispute, grows a squirrel, sure, sure, sure. Draws some cards. Undaps. Uh, yeah, yeah, opponent, gonna learn a little lesson about not playing magic here. Chalice on one, got him. <laughs> shame scoop, shame scoop, can we get the shame scoop? Aw, no shame scoop. Opponent goes to combat, gets it, it's us. I would like to sacrifice the Sterling Grove, but it's risky, too risky. Getting the overwhelming splendor would be sweet. Opponent passes. I mean, I guess we win. <laughs> I guess we win. Uh, let's thin the deck, blow up a land. It's fine that we played the chalice and our opponent just immediately slung a spell into it.
I'm glad that some things never change. We've done that many, many times ourselves. Uh, I'll play the land, play Solemnity. This probably is the enough of a lock for our opponent to scoop. With two Sterling Groves, I just, I don't know how our opponent possibly gets out of this. All right, gonna draw a card. Sure, that is acceptable. And maintenance soon. Why do it? Why are we maintenancing? All right, pass the turn. Our deck is so brutal that a wizard is gonna stop us. They're so <laughs> worried that we're gonna make people stop playing magic that we're going into an emergency maintenance, uh, maintenance to keep us from locking poor arena zoomers out of the game. Oh no. All right, they're going to Mortality Sphere the Chalice. I mean, that does do something, but I don't think it does enough because, I mean, we still have the enchantment lock. Opponent plays a land. Rev okay, this time they need to get rid of the Chalice so they can play a Squirrel. The problem is we just don't take damage forever. Yes, we will take zero. Solemnity doing things. Opponent looking at Solemnity, regretting their choice to play magic today, getting Lurus. Oh, we draw another land. I don't even know if we care about a 2-2. Two -two. Let's play a Temple Garden tapped. Pass the turn. Opponent gets to flip. If we didn't have these two Sterling Groves, we'd be getting wrecked. Uh, take zero? I wonder if our opponent has figured out what's happening yet. I can, we can do this all day, opponent. We can do this all day. Luris, sure. Not great with the rest in peace out, opponent. Oh my god, Knight of Souls Betrayal. Yeah, I don't think we can sack. Yeah, we gotta keep the Sterling Grove, unfortunately. Knight of Souls Betrayal. Add that to the lock. Another Knight of Souls Betrayal, not as good. Land tapped, go. The problem is, because they still have this frenzied trap breaker, if we sack a Sterling Grove, then they can blow up the other Sterling Grove, and then they can blow up our lock pieces, and then we could actually lose. So we gotta, we can't tutor up the Overwhelming Splendor yet. Actually, maybe we can. Okay, so these are unflipped. If they don't flip, I think we can do it on our upkeep, because then we were just gonna lock their creatures. Okay, so yeah, let's, oh, watch us get max punished. So we sack one, yeah, we're gonna do it. There's a little bit of risk here. This is probably unnecessary risk, but the payoff is so hilarious and good that we're gonna do it. So we sack a Sterling Grove. Opponent. Blows up the other Sterling Grove. Okay. Opponent. Fatal pushes our Sanctum Weaver, okay. Well, we get Overwhelming Splendor. We draw Overwhelming Splendor. We play, go to our main phase, play Overwhelming Splendor, targeting you. Draw a card. So this won't get rid of the Squirrel. Okay, all right, they're gonna get rid of the Knight of Souls Betrayal, which is actually okay because we have another Knight of Souls Betrayal. So Overwhelming Splendor, you. Pass the turn. So we definitely took risk that was not necessary, but we're trying to set up the Knight of Souls Betrayal lock, which is sweet. Yeah. Trail of Crumbs, opponent, hits us for zero, sure, sure, sure. Opponent passes, we'll play the land, Sanctum Weaver, draw a card. Ugh, more lands. Knight of Souls Betrayal, draw a card. So creatures are locked. Opponent, Fatal Push, Sanctum Weaver, sure. Ugh, that's a lot of lands. Undaps. All right, plays a land. <laughs> I think the line we took actually probably made us less likely to win the game, but <laughs> it's too sweet to pass up. All right, so live did he draw a card? Ooh, Sethis, okay. Sethis draw a card. Rest in peace number two, draw two cards. Yeah, I mean, I think we're still gonna be fine. Our opponent literally can't play creatures. Wow, that's a lot of fatal pushes. They literally cannot play creatures for the rest of this game, which I think means they're gonna be in kind of a rough spot. Oh, another overwhelming splendor too. Wrath the graveyard again, play the tap land. So how does our opponent get out of this? I don't think they do. They gotta blow up both solemnities. Opponent passes. Well, okay, Sethus draw a card. <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe they win by milling us out. We did take out all our wind guns. Oh my god, Enchantress's Presence. Uh, Enchantress's Presence, draw two cards. We will mill out before our opponent here. Well, Godless Shrine tapped past the turn. We need our, uh, we need our Lair of the Hydra, I guess. 
and our opponent not to draw another removal spell. Oh, that's not gonna work, opponent. <laughs> that's not what we're doing today. We're not resolving creatures. Opponent passes. Uh, we untap. Well, uh, overwhelming splendor you again. Draw three cards. When does our opponent give up? Ooh, there's a chalice, that's good. And there's a Lair of the Hydra, okay. Lair of the Hydra. Chalice on one. All right, village rights, sex is score. At some point our opponent has to give up here. <laughs> At some point they have to give up. All right, we will uh, pass the turn. Two overwhelming splendors, chalice, Oh, I'm an idiot. Chalice doesn't work because of nine lives. Well, it kind of worked because it made our opponent, uh, or because of Solemnity. It kind of worked though, because it made our opponent uh, sacrifice their stuff. All right, gets rid of both Overwhelming Splendors. Although unfortunately for our opponent, we have the third. Yeah, that's that's a non-bow, isn't it? Okay, Curse Bound Witch. Opponent, going to pass. Well, okay, Overwhelming Splendor you. Draw some cards. Opponent's gonna sack the food. Sure. Gets a land. Well, it's time to start trying to deal damage. One, one, two, three, four. We get in for four, not even three. Well, Lair of the Hydrax four. Hit you for three. Opponent down to 22. Plays the land passes. Well, I mean, I think we gotta keep attacking. Uh, so one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ten, eleven. Okay, so Lair the Hydra, X twelve. Go to combat, hit ya. One more, we need one more turn. We need one more turn of Lair the Hydra attacks. Creatures locked. I mean, we're going for it. Lair of the Hydrax 11. Hit ya? <laughs> oh no! Oh. Well, we just want to give our opponent one more turn to top deck a fatal push. <laughs> Oops. I did not take into account our Knight of the Souls betrayal. I was too busy uh, gloating. <laughs> <laughs> and opponents well that was a that was a weird match that was a weird match i mean we got them and we got to see our lock be awesome we locked their graveyard we locked creatures out of the game we did everything uh yes we might have chalice punted our opponent did too they cast into the chalice but yeah chalice uh it's eliminate not exactly a combo uh probably uh in the future if we run into this we take out the solemnities for the chalice but i mean we cast three overwhelming splendors we guys multiple night of betrayal our opponent literally could do nothing so despite our puns we just locked him so hard it didn't even matter <laughs> sweet sweet so what do we learn this week about hard lock enchantress in historic magic arena and the plan worked really well we went undefeated with the deck we kind of just absolutely crushed people we had so many early scoops of opponents seemingly a little bit frustrated about having their creatures or planeswalkers or spells locked out of the game so the deck actually felt shockingly competitive which i guess kind of makes sense like the enchantments package is really good a lot of our locks work well with it they just happen to be enchantments so we have all this synergy built into the deck and then we also have the just like oops we locked you out of the game we did have hard times finishing the game in some cases, but the good news is pretty much none of our opponents actually made us kill them. Like they just waited until we had a couple of lock pieces on the battlefield and then they gave up. They probably went to play some Hearthstone or Storybook Brawl or whatever, some other game where it's a little bit harder to get locked out of the game, a little bit easier to cast your spells, to have your creatures stick on the battlefield. So I would say this deck was a pretty great success. I think we taught some arena players some really good life lessons about the history of magic, how it used to be in the old days when it was so easy to get locked out of the game there were so many miserable cards that just kept you from doing anything so i think we we did our duty uh teaching a new generation of magic players what it's like to not be able to play magic so thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon